Coming up next on the Wet Fly Swing Podcast. When I was first learning how to fly fish, my uncle's like, you're going to love it. Here's what you need to do. You need to go out and get you a number 18 beadhead pheasant tail nymph. Get a bunch of them. And we went to Decker's. It was one of my first trips out. I landed eight monsters at Decker's on on that 18 beadhead pheasant tail. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That was Phil Montano with his top fly story. Fly holders, fly boxes, and the passion of a graphic designer. Today on the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. Hey, how you doing today? Thanks for stopping by the show. Phil gives us his favorite uh, top fly story today on the podcast, so stay tuned for that. If you want to head over and uh, tell your story, choose your favorite top fly, you can go to wetflyswing.com slash topfly, and we'll be giving away some, uh, some products, some swag along the way. Today's episode is sponsored by Stonefly Nets, putting quality before quantity with their handcrafted custom wood landing nets. When Ethan designs your net, it's his hope and goal to help you form lasting memories every time you're on the water. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash stonefly right now. That's S-T-O-N-E-F-L-Y to get started right now. Phil Montana shares a story of creating a new kind of way to carry your flies. We find out where the fly trap idea came from. How he's serving the older market now with a new product he has coming here and what he's got coming up in the pipeline. Let's jump into it. So without further ado, here he is, Phil Montano from The Fly Trap. How's it going, Phil? Great, Dave. How are you doing? Good, man. Good to uh, good to finally put this one together. We've been, uh, it feels like we've been talking for uh, like 10 years, you know what I mean? Because we've been talking about this. I've been seeing you at the shows. You've been giving me, I've got tons of your product. You've Every time I see you, you're like, here, here's a bunch of, you know, and, and now you got some new, I think the last thing you gave me was the magnifier, which I've been using, which is cool. We're going to talk a little about your products, dig into the fly trap, what it is, what makes it unique. But before we get there, bring us back to fly fishing. How'd you first get into it? Okay, so I, I grew up spin fishing on the Arkansas River and kind of by, uh, you know, the Royal Gorge, uh, Highway 50, Canyon City to Salida in Buena Vista area. And, you know, we did that for years and years. Uh, my One of my brothers who has been the uh, best angler in the family uh, converted probably 15 years ago to fly fishing and his buddy taught him how and then he was like you should try this it's it's fun it's challenging but you know it offers a lot more a lot of lot different things than uh spin fishing does and and so uh i gave it a shot and <laughs> here i am there you are. So the, the, in the story, you know, so you gave it a shot and, and you're into it. And when, you know, this is always the interesting thing for me. At what point do you realize, oh, my gosh, I could start a, a business in this? Well, when I first started fly fishing, I was really frustrated with all of the stuff you had to carry. All the gear, all the pockets in your vests and all the, <laughs> this, yep. the uh, disorganization. Um, I, I wasn't great at it. And I was just like, there's got to be a better way to do this. I was like, I was, I was always complaining to my brother about, you know, why is it so complicated? Like, you know, I need to do a better job with this. And mainly what I wanted was a place to put flies that were had busted heads or unraveling, broken hooks, or just a worthless fly. It was taking too much time to get into my bag get into my box, store it, get a new one. I was wasting too much time fumbling and digging. Um, and that was taking so much time from my fishing game. Yeah, that's it. And that's, and, you know, that was on the Platte River. And one day I was just like, this is, I've got to come up with something. And then I got a piece of rubber and used it. I put it on a piece of paracord and I, I didn't lose any flies out of it. And I was like, hey, I could use this thing to actually hold flies instead of going in a box. So then it, you know, snowballed into 
all of these other things. But it spawned off of frustration, really. Yeah, it started with frustration. That that's that's pretty interesting, and, and you, I hear that occasionally. That that's you know where a good product starts is from your own you know frustration. And uh, and so the fly trap. So describe, you know, because it doesn't. It does more than just hold your fly, right? Describe for somebody who doesn't have it in front of them, never, has never heard of it. You know, what, what is it? What, what's it? Uh, what's it look like? All that. Yeah. So it's basically um, a minimalist. I, I hate to call it a lanyard, but um, because it doesn't go around your neck, you can clip this anywhere. It has a four hundred pound cord that goes through the center of it. And it has two uh, no-fail carabiners on each end. So you can clip it horizontally, vertically, um, on pack straps, on waiter straps. Several different options for you to clip it on. But what it does is it, it compacts everything into 10 inches of space. So you have cylinders made out of silicone, 100% silicone, that, can, that grip your flies. And you can hold dozens and dozens of flies depending on its size um outside of a fly box and you're confident knowing that those flies are going to be there unlike a yep. foam patch or a faux fur patch or a velcro patch none of that stuff really grips flies so um that for is first and foremost the most important part of the fly trap it also has a a section in the middle where you can leash on several tools all your vital tools and on the bottom section of it you can either add another cylinder to hold more flies a six rig cylinder which holds rigs and flies or um, several spools of tippet so this is everything you need uh i mean a lot of people like to go high country um high mountain lake fishing and they they want to be very minimalistic you can load your fly trap up with everything you need and it's super compact you know everybody from from guides to tankara fishermen love this thing because it's so versatile yeah it is that's that so that's it so you're so this product is essentially i mean it, do you market it as like literally you don't need a vest or a sling anymore you can just this you can get everything everything you need is right on this on the fly trap yes Absolutely. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. So including, um, yeah, like uh, uh, nippers, pliers. I mean, I guess, again, it's minimalist, so you're not going to have, um, you know, all the all the extra stuff. But do you even carry, um, I mean, so you don't have like a bag or like extra fly box when you're out there? Um, only when I'm like jumping in a river after, you know, I'm driving on the highway and I just don't, you know, I don't want the whole rigmarole. Of, you know, putting on waders and all that stuff. I just want to like get my line wet. Uh, I'll use it that way. Pull it out of my glove box or um, the back of the truck, and I'm good to go. But I do carry a pack. A sling pack is my favorite. But the reason why I carry a pack is because we end up hiking all day into the night. So uh, I need water and food and maybe a rain jacket. Yeah. But I don't use my bag to carry you know, all of my essentials. So, you know, for gearing up and rigging up, it's all, you know, it's all in front of me, you know, however, I will say that, um, because it's interchangeable, you can actually collect cylinders, preload the cylinders, including the six rig cylinders with fly selections. So you can have streamers on one midges on another, right? You can uh, load them up by color, by size, by category, by bug, you know, um, and be very specific about how you load your um, load your cylinders. And then you can buy a four dollar, five dollar Plano box and store your cylinders in those those containers. All right. It's super efficient. Um, you know, I've got to do a better job of really educating people on how amazing this this tool is. Because when you can interchange something like this and, you know, have that flexibility, it's everything. It's, yeah. it's, it just changes your whole game. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, I was using it. Uh, we were up uh, in uh, Kamloops this last week, and I was using um, 
Well, I had the whole thing, you know, the leader spool, I got some fluorocarbon I was using and yeah, I mean, that makes it really slick. And then I, so I had, and I always love, and I also love how you're always like change it. Like you added the carabiner. I'm a carabiner freak. I love having carabiners. So when you, when you sent me that or you gave me that other one with the new carabiner, I was like, oh, nice. Right. Because yeah. carabiner versus, I can't remember what you had before. I think maybe it was just a plastic clip, but the, the carabiner is, is a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, at the time, you know, everything evolves. And I was just like, I've got to make this thing super stout. You know, people put expensive gear on it. I've got to make sure it's it's bulletproof. And I'm finally there, you know, uh, I figured it out a way to make it, you know, basically indestructible. And the carabiners that I have on there now are basically the no-fail carabiners. So there's no little metal piece to fall off. There's no, yeah. there's no failing of the spring. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a good deal. Like they work excellent. And they're not obviously, you know, not made for climbing, but they're, you know, that is one of the things you see when you see these occasionally you'll get a cheap carabiner and it'll definitely, it'll break eventually. Right. But yeah, these are, um, I'm not sure the difference, but they have, um, you know, the, the actual, I don't know, the latch right on it has like two pieces of metal instead of just the one. It, it, is that what you call it? It's a no, it's fail safe. I call it, yeah, fail safe or no fail carabiner, which yeah, so it's it's not a it's not a riveted pivot uh, bar. It's with a metal spring. It's all one wire, so it goes from one end all the way, wraps around and to the other side of the yep. the wall of the carabiner, and you know it's tension, but uh, it's really not going to fail ever. <laughs> not going to fail. No, that's good. Well, and I want to dig into what we're going to talk a little more about the, um, I want to talk about some of your other products as well. The, the magnifier was really cool because for me, you know, like glasses, right. In the last few years, I've started wearing glasses and things like that. But I noticed out there, it was nice having that magnifier because I can kind of put it out of my way. I didn't have to wear glasses. That was a bonus. So I could have my sunglasses on. And then, and then it was always there when I needed, I just slide it. And, um, so that's cool. So we're going to dig into that and some of the other stuff, but, um, let's talk a little more on fly holders, you know, like fly boxes, stuff like that. Cause I've got like a, a bazillion fly boxes. I got little fly boxes. I got, you know, big fly boxes. And the problem is, is that, man, I mean, it takes up a whole bag, all these fly, and it's not really, I, you know, you try to organize them, but what would you say when somebody asks you like how to hold your flies other than, you know, what you have, and you mentioned the foam stuff, which is a challenge, what are the solutions out there for um, fly storage? And then also, is there anything like what you have out there? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, so I think boxes um, can be tricky. You know, there's there's boxes that that are watertight. Yep. And that helps if you have them in your waders. But then you have the bulk. Uh, there's boxes that that have no watertight seal at all, and, and actually compress a fly hook rather than sticking it in uh, silicone or foam. And then you have other boxes that have magnets. So really it just depends on the size of the fly, I think, that yep. you're dealing with. Because, you know, obviously your fluffy, um, you know, uh, stimulators and Pat's rubber leg and things like that, they all need a bigger storage yep. container. So I like to use those, you know, larger box larger compartment boxes for those kinds of flies. So I have actually various fly boxes to store all of the flies, the excess flies that I have. And my product, keep in mind, doesn't eliminate the fly box, the need for a fly box. Um, it just eliminates the need for you to get in that fly box when you're on the river fishing. Right. You know, that's the key part. So, um, you know, own any fly box you want to own, but, what I actually own the most of are these Plano spinner boxes, right? So they're, ho they're, they're large compartments made to hold spinners. Well, a spinner is almost exactly the same size as one of my cylinders. So you can load up each of your cylinders with your fly selections and store them in those Plano boxes that are so inexpensive. They're not watertight, yeah. but the whole point is, you know, um, the whole point is to organize, get organized. Organize, exactly. And most times I carry maybe one fly box with four or five cylinders in it. The other trick I use, I have an iPad watertight bag. That's, you know, it's not a large iPad, but it's, it's small enough to fit in my 
waiter pocket, my chest waiter pocket. So I unzip my waiter pocket and I fill up that watertight container with cylinders and I slide it in my chest pocket. So I have 10, 12 cylinders uh, ready to roll with, I mean, hundreds of flies and no bulk, just super streamlined. That's one of my tricks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha. So you got the so you got the water. So you got your flies there, and you mentioned yeah, you got tons of fly boxes. And the the Plano stuff is just you're talking about those like clear plastic, right? So you can kind of see everything. Yes. Yeah. And you know they make they make various sizes, but the ones the ones I have the most of are like the five slot, five or six slot. Yeah, five or slot. Yeah. Yeah. I know and what you're saying. Yeah. They work slick, and it's cost effective. Yeah, I got. T- I have tons of those as well. Yeah, I've got the. I mean, you got the big ones. You got like the boat boxes. I've got. You know, like I said, I've got all sorts of fly boxes. I need to get my organization going. So, that might be a way we could look at this. You know, okay, like tips and uh, you know tips on fly organization. Really, that's that's the solution you offer. Like you said, you're not trying to take away. You know, you're not saying you don't need fly boxes. Definitely, everybody needs fly boxes. But you're just making it a way to to actually organize your things better and then make it more minimalist while you're out there and easier to get to it. Yes, absolutely. We want to keep you out of your fly box as long as possible because when you're out of your fly box, that means you're in the river yep. and your line is wet and hopefully tight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On the silicone thing, and that works really nice, how does that work with the flies? I mean, you can. is there a fly that's either too small or too big? And then once you poke the hole, does it just heal or how does that, how does that work? Yeah, so um, no, there's absolutely no size that, that this won't hold. Uh, it'll hold a large, um, everything from a 22, 24 to, uh, you know, a a ginormous, uh, streamer. So this silicone is phenomenal. You know, people say self healing, but what it does is it actually just closes up the hole. So you'll, you'll poke a hole in it. When you pull that hook out, it'll close back up and it, um, silicone works so well that, you can actually put a hook back in the same hole and it'll still grip that fly. Wow. Unlike foam, you know, if you go back into the same hole you had, it's stretched out oh, yeah. and then that hook wiggles and that's how they fall out. Um, yeah. There's no give either. My cylinders rotate. So a lot of people don't realize that the way that it's designed and set up is your spools actually create a gap between your body and the flies because uh it's it's kind of the the spools force the center of the fly trap up away from your body and that doesn't cause friction on your flies oh that that's why the spools when you mean the leader spools yes yep gotcha yeah and so that helps but um also if you bump your flies the silicone grips it so it's going to keep them but the cylinders also spin so they rotate and there's give and play with, you know, with it so that the flies don't get, you know, hooked and fall into the water. Right, right. Yeah, that's it. Because that, that's always been the struggle. I, you know, I've always had like, I think my old vest I used to have where I had a, you know, a fly patch, like you said, what is it? What was that stuff? It wasn't, um, I guess, is it wool? The white little kind of where you, t- it was really yeah. shaggy. Yeah, the wool, right? Yeah, the wool. Sometimes some of it's real, some of it's fake. Uh but man, you could never get them out of there. No, you couldn't. You couldn't get them out. And then, and then the other thing is, like, if it was a barbless fly. I mean, you could never trust that that thing was going to be there. No. It was only you'd only put it there for a second while changing your fly, and then you'd pop it off and do something different. But there's other things out there, like, um, you know, another. You probably well, you've seen um, uh, that. You mentioned the magnetic uh, sort of thing, and uh, like the lid rig, right? He's kind of doing some yeah. of the the magnet magnetic fly storage, but. I guess on that, that's kind of an interesting thing too, because I guess when you do that, um, you know, I mean, that's one type of solution, but there's also, you mentioned that the foam, um, there's different types of foam out there they're using now, but all of them are the same. You can't really trust necessarily that your fly is going to stick if your vest or your bag's banging around, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and there's, there's, you know, there's issues with pretty much everything that's out there. Magnets, you bump it hard enough, it's going to come off. Yeah. There's uh, one of my Magnafly uses uh, those super strong, uh, super tiny magnets, but you know that's up on your hat and away from any way to bump it. 
without you hitting it with your, your own hand. Um, and those are for on-deck flies. But magnets are good in some situations, not all situations for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You're very limited to how many flies you can carry with magnets. This episode is sponsored by Deddy Flies, established in 1928, the oldest family-run fly shop in the country. I've been very excited this year to have Deddy on the show, and we're going to be putting together some episodes here soon, digging into some some old school, some cat skills. I know that's definitely a topic out there people are wanting to hear, so some of the history of the fly tying, and Deddy is right in the middle of that. They got the the long history there and some cool stories, so stay tuned for that. We're going to be telling some of those stories. They're located in Livingston Manor. Deddy is your welcoming place on the creek or online. Deddy Fly's inventory consists solely of products that meet every angler's demand for the highest quality and service. They also offer fly fishing and casting lessons as well. For more information, head over to Deddy Flies right now. That's wetflyswing.com slash Deddy. That's D-E-T-T-E. You support this podcast by clicking over through that link to Deddy. So you've also got this magnifier, right? What, what, you have that? Let's talk about that and then the other things you have going. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I had noticed um, I was having a harder and harder time seeing my flies. Uh, and I so I started wearing the clip-on bifocals, right? And, you know, they were frustrating to me because I would always misplace them and they would break or they would, you know, in every photo, I, I look kind of like <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I look older than oh. <laughs> I what I feel like I should look. Yeah, you know, and uh, it it was just frustrating to me. My only solution was was these bifocals um, to be able to rig up and see my you know my line and my eye hooks, etc. So um, I was like, you know, really, I just want something more compact something that I can clip on my hat or my vest straps or my waiter straps um, and, and use it when I need it, not have it on my hat all the time. Um, and I also like the fact that you can grab the Magnify and clip it from one hat to another very easily. And it is one, it's 100% secure yeah. with the, the strength of the clip. But so essentially I was losing my eyesight. I, um, I like magnifiers. And I, and I wanted to combine a clip with a magnifier, which nobody has. And um, my patent is pending on it. Um, I did finally get a trademark on the name Magnify, so nobody can use that. Mm-hmm. And so uh, really it was just fine-tuning the design and making the lens big enough but not too big so that it can fold under a bill of a hat. Um, and then the last element was adding some magnets on it uh, which I absolutely love because <laughs> yeah. they're clutch. Um, so when you finally figure out the fly that's hitting, you can put a couple of them on your magnify under your bill and have them there waiting. Yep. Uh, on deck. I call it, <laughs> uh, the on deck flies. Right. I love <laughs> it. You got the baseball analogy going. So you got the on deck. Yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> They work amazing. So it's, it's evolved, you know, really well. And yeah, I'm super happy with it. And it's selling like crazy on Amazon and yeah. selling like crazy on, uh, you know, in stores. Yeah. So it's proving to be, uh, one of those ideas that, you know, goes along with my MO, which is, you know, Hey, you see bigger, you can rig faster and yeah. you can use it with, uh, any hat any strap, uh, you can customize where you want it. It swivels 180 and 360. So you can lock it out of your way when you're not using it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's super versatile. You have to, there's a learning curve with, with magnifiers though. You can't, you can't just clip it somewhere and, and expect to, to be able to, you know, not, not have a learning curve with your eye adjustment. That's the thing that I noticed that it worked great, but it wasn't like I'm wearing a, like my glasses, right? So I can just turn my, you, you, you have to, 
you know, I was noticing like, well, do I use two eyes or do I close one eye? Because and then how far away, you know, the magnifier works great. So how, when you're doing that, do you find yourself, is it a, a kind of a two eyes or is there a situation where you're might maybe using one eye looking through it? Well, some people may need one eye, but hey, if you can see great and rig it up with one eye, then so be it. <laughs> you know, uh, however you have to use a magnifier, but uh, I guarantee that you will eventually get used to using it. And I now I don't have to even squint one eye. Oh, right. Yeah. So I can use it really quickly and I've adjusted well to it. And it, it uh, you know, I, I can't live without it now. It's like absolutely <laughs> my one of my vital, vital tools. It's nice to have it out of the way. That's the thing, you know, Phil, is that it, it um, you know, you flip it up you know, when you need it, but then you flip it out of the way and you kind of forget about it, which is nice. Then you can kind of just be, I guess, depending on your vision. And, and that's another thing there, right? Is the magnification, is it the standard, like a, what is it like a two point? Is it, is that how it goes? Like, just like glasses, the magnifying? Yeah. It's like readers, kind of like readers. It has a, a mine is, is uh, like three X, which is, you know, okay. it's not too strong, but it's, um, for some people it's too strong, but it's, it's a very, middle of the road, um, magnification and, uh, you know, it's glass. So it's precision glass. It's not going to scratch. Oh, gotcha. You know, unless you drop it on a rock, but, um, I did not want, um, a plastic lens because I, you know, I wanted this thing to be quality. Um, and the great thing about it is you can wear any sunglasses. If you wear prescriptions and, you know, you forget your prescriptions one day. You have this as a backup, but you can wear any sunglasses you want, you know, with it. And that's a lot of, that's a big deal for a lot of people that have to get, you know, tinted, uh, polarized mm. prescriptions. Uh, you know, now you don't have to go get tinted polarized prescriptions. You can just, you know, go buy a really sweet looking pair of sunglasses and use your magnifier. Yeah. And you're good to go. That's really cool. Yeah, I noticed I, I have a, a pair of uh, Costas that have like the bite, you know, the blend. You can barely tell it, but there's bifocals down at the bottom. And those are those are pretty nice. Those are actually, I've been, I've you know, that was my struggle is that I always had a pair of glasses. That was such a hassle. But now I find that, you know, it's working pretty well. Um, so, so yeah, it's, uh, so talk about some of the other stuff you have going or, or, or maybe some other stuff you have coming up. Yeah, so I have <clears throat> two different cylinders for the fly trap. Um, one is the original cylinder that comes with every fly trap. And that's, a, that's an engineered cylinder. Um, I can't give away all my secrets, sure. but it, it's, <laughs> it's engineered pretty well to, um, be able to hold every, every kind of fly, every size. And that you can buy individually at retail. I think they're 495 fly trap is 1495, uh, to 1695. And then our newest cylinder is the six rig cylinder, which holds six pre type two fly dropper rigs. So you can sit in front of your TV or at your campsite um, in your camper uh, night before and pre tie your dropper rigs, um, you know, hopper droppers and, you know, whatnot. Yep. So this will hold six of them really securely. And a lot of people think, well, it's so narrow. And once I unravel this, the line memory is going to have this spring coil and it's going to be a nightmare to, to straighten that out. Absolutely wrong. I mean, all it takes is a pinch of the finger and the thumb and just swing it twice and your line is perfectly straight. So no fear there with, uh, with that. That uh, cylinder is silicone also, you know, whereas a lot of the rig holders out there are foam, which mm -hmm. eventually start to break down. And uh, this this will last you possibly forever. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. So that's it. So that's the tip there on the leader. You wrap yeah. it around. It's If it is coiled up, you just add a little bit of heat and you put it between your fingers and you stretch it. You just rub your fingers through the and it straightens it. Yep. You pinch it. And I have a line straightener. Um, you know, for new leaders and, and most people do carry a line straightener. Um, but either your finger and your thumb, just pinch the line and straighten it, pull down. Yeah. Is slick. And when I show people that at trade shows, 
they're just like, oh, I never would have thought that it would be that easy to just straighten that line out. And it, it works super slick. Super slick. Yeah, it does. Let's see. Where, now, where are you out of? What part of the, the country are you in right now? I'm in Roxborough, Colorado, which is, you know, a suburb of Littleton. And, uh, you know, it's, yeah, we're right in the foothills, as far south as you can get in Denver Metro before you hit Sedalia. Yeah, that's right. So you are in Colorado. And that's what I was thinking. The uh, Have you seen Ben, uh, the, the, the huge fly fisherman? You seen his stuff out there at all? No. Yeah, he he's the um he I can't remember where I came across him, but he's he's kind of like a a similar well I guess similar to a Hank Patterson. He's like a he's got these comedy fly fishing videos out there, and um and one of them is like the ten essential things you know you don't need, and and one of, <laughs> you know one of them is a uh, is a line straightener right. He's got like he's kind of it's all joke, but it's like line straightener. You know he's got all these things. It's just it's funny. And I can't remember now. It was an episode. I'll put a link in in case. It's episode two twenty three. Uh huh. Um, and he <laughs> and so he's he's got his comedy bit, and it's uh it's definitely good. So um, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But uh, good. So so we got a little taste of what you have going, and obviously the you know the solutions there. You know, and all these pains for people are, are real. You know, seeing you know for somebody like. When you get to that age, whether, you know what I mean, everybody eventually gets there. They need some help with their vision. Um, but uh, what, what's it been like for you? I'm just curious on the process because I know we've been talking over the years at some of the shows and things like that. You know, as far as like ups and downs, what, what's been what's been a big um, a win for you? Like over if you look back, what was one thing that happened, you know, through this business where you're like, wow, that was a huge thing? Well, I think I think it always goes back to response. And, you know, the anglers that come up to me and say, this thing is the best invention uh, to to hit fly fishing with the fly trap. Um, it's just been, you know, the product's evolved and gotten better and better and better over the years. As I've been able to put more money into uh, better design, better materials. Um, but really, it's just the response that I just love hearing from anglers that just from all over the place, um, you know, products all over the world and. And, and I get emails, I get messages, I get, you know, people coming up to me at trade shows and just saying, I absolutely love your product. It has changed my life. And it, that to me is the biggest win you can get. You know, um, our MO is, is really just making people's experience better and more efficient and helping you spend more time actually fishing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the goal. Absolutely fishing. And, you know, I really can say that it does do that. If you use everything properly, um, you know, everything that we carry helps you save time. All of our products. And they don't break the bank. You know, I didn't want to have another product out there that's, you know, forty nine ninety five, or, you know, God, nippers are just. Right unbelievably expensive like it's wh why yeah why do things have to be you know a million dollars <laughs> I, I don't understand it so i was able to um figure out you know process and materials and um manufacturing to get you know these products you know affordable for everyone and my products are are for every level of angler too so you know from beginners that luckily for them, they can right out of the gate, they can get organized and they can be efficient. But whereas guides, you know, all the way to guides and experts, they love the fly trap because, you know, if they're rigging up their clients, they can just pluck flies and line right off of their chest and, you know, wherever their fly trap is and have it all in one split place and, you know, it's super efficient, super time efficient. Yeah. But yeah, the feedback, the feedback is always king. Yeah, the feedback is it. That's why it's cool. And and on that feedback, do you find yourself trying to um, set things up to hear, you know, how, how do you make sure you're always kind of, you know, innovating or hearing from your, your people? Are they just kind of reaching out to you just from without, just kind of organically? You know, I haven't had a ton of negative feedback, you know, um, I do take all of my feedback very seriously 
And when, you know, all my products guaranteed. So if, if you ever have an issue with, with any of your products, um, hit me up on social media, on my website. I, I will refund your money or send you a new product um, or something, you know, that would is, is more fitting to your needs. Yeah, uh, but, perfect. You know, it's I take all of my feedback very seriously and, and thankfully not a lot of negative feedback with it. That's great. I'll put a link out to um, to a video that I did. Uh, this is a couple years back um, on the YouTube channel. I don't do a lot of YouTube. Or I haven't been doing a lot, but it's um, it's there. We'll, we'll put that in the show notes so people can take a look at this. The you know kind of the unboxing thing I did there. But obviously, you know, your website um, we'll be sending them out to and and uh, and people can check that or or on Amazon. Do you do you tend to if somebody says if we say where should we send people to take a look and maybe if they purchase if they want it, do you send them to Amazon or where do you send them? Well, I, I have a link tree now. So um, I have a link tree that has one location for accessing Artisan Angler products and me personally. So um, it's linktr.ee slash Artisan Angler. And you hit that, you go right to all of these places. So I have two Amazon pages. A Magnify Amazon page, Flytrap Amazon page, website, YouTube, and Facebook, all in one spot. Right there. Perfect. Right on Linktree. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Well, anything else before we start to wrap this up that you want to give a shout out to and what you have either currently or coming up? Um, well, I do have some, some ideas in the hopper. I can't really explain what they are just yet, Yeah, <laughs> but... But I will say that every product that, that Artisan Angler develops, um, they all pertain to uh, helping you rig up faster. Um, that's our tagline, um, see bigger, rig faster. You know, So it's all going to help your game and keep you in the water and you know, not fumbling and digging. There you go. So it will it will relate to that. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And are you doing all this stuff as far as the design, the engineering, and things like that? What is your background? Are you hiring that out? I mean, how do you get to a point where you can create, you know, like the find out, you know, the right silicone or all that stuff? So yeah, um, I'm a graphic designer by trade. I've been doing it for over 32 years, and I do all my marketing, my branding, um, my package design, and Although I'm not, you know, professionally trained in product design, I did design my products. Uh, I did help have help with my factory, and they're guys that take my 3D design and make it obviously uh, in programs that that can create the molds and things like that. But um, so yeah, it's a team effort. I, I have a a large group of design fly fishing friends that help me along the way. And I have friends that help me with my website implementation, my Amazon implementation, things like that. So I hire the right people for the right job. But yeah, essentially, I build the foundation of designing the product and packaging and marketing. Perfect. Perfect. And and yeah, so essentially, you're, you're running running the show there. This is um, good. I, I want to take it out of here in a couple of things. Um, one is uh, just on flies. So we obviously the fly trap. I wanted to get your your top fly here. Uh, and so you're in Colorado. What's your, you know, fishing wise? Are you focused on trout? Yes. Um, you know, uh, love a good brown trout. Uh, but you know, we catch. Well, we fish the region too. So we, you know, we we hit a few states bordering Colorado, uh, New Mexico, Wyoming. Um, and so it's mostly trout. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly every, trout. every kind of trout imaginable. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. That's good. Well, we're going to do, so we're doing this little challenge here where we're giving away some, um, some fly boxes and flies and things like that. So it's, it's the top fly challenge. And, uh, and I want to get your top fly. So if you had to, you, you can only pick one. This is the only one thing. What is the, and I know obviously you got a lot of different hatches and stuff, but what, what would you be putting on your fly trap if you're going out tomorrow? If I'm going out tomorrow and I can only use one, then I would say it'd have to be um, a beadhead pheasant tail. No. There you go. Love it. <laughs> Love it. The pheasant tail. That's that's probably it's a super versatile fly, man. I, I mean, know. It, it looks like so many bugs and I know. And 
my uncle actually, when I was first learning how to fly fish, my uncle's like, you're going to love it. Here's what you need to do. You need to go out and get you a number 18 beadhead pheasant tail nymph. Get a bunch of them. And we went to Decker's. It was one of my first trips out. I landed eight monsters at Decker's oh, on, wow. on that 18 beadhead pheasant tail. Nice. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That's great. But, um, was it just a standard or did it have any flash or anything else in it? No, no flash. Just a standard bead head. Just yeah. you're, you're just the only well, just the bead head is the only thing. Yeah, you get a little bit yeah. of yeah. Yeah, because there's pheasant tails without bead heads and, and yeah. for some reason they just I think I think the other one, the bead head works the best out here for sure. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, the pheasant tail is already in all. I'll put a link at wetflyswing.com slash topfly is where people, if they're listening now, you can go enter uh, enter to win some of these fly boxes and, and they can choose. Uh, we'll, we'll add your, the fe- I think the pheasant tail is already there, so I'll add it in and people could, uh, they're going to choose out of all, all of our guests. We've got a number of these of, of our guests who've uh, chosen their flies. So um, well, I think the pheasant tail, I'm not going to call it now, but the pheasant tail might be the number one. I'm not. I'm not totally sure. It's definitely yeah, we, it's my favorite. We have to send you out a couple of fly traps and magna flies to give to your listeners too. And yeah, uh, you can stick a few of those uh, pheasant tails on there. That'd be cool. We'll do that. We'll do that <laughs> when we do the next one. We're going to be doing these drawings throughout the year. So uh, as they come up, yeah, we'll get that'll be a little bonus for this episode. So if people want to go there right now and sign up, uh, we'll make sure to to add a fly trap down the line um, for that winter. This is this is cool. All right, Phil. So I always love to get a random one out of you. And um, we've got, I mentioned off air, we got this big episode that just uh, went live um, with Henry Winkler, the Fonz, right? So I've been building up to this episode and it's live now. And uh, and it got me thinking because I was watching a documentary last night. Um, I don't watch a lot of TV, but man, I was watching the Muhammad Ali. I love Ken Burns, you know, Ken uh-huh. Burns, and, and I was watching the Muhammad Ali documentary and it, just a crazy, amazing story of this guy, right? His, his story. But it just got me thinking, like, wow, what do I love movies? You know, I love documentaries. But what about you? You know, when you think about just generally, are, are you a big, like, movie, TV buff? Uh, you know, is are there any shows or movies that really, when you think, you know, your favorites, is there one out there? Yes. Um, you know, uh, my wife sometimes has to peel me away from the TV and remind me that I, I have I have a real job upstairs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. So, um, you know, I don't know what it is, but. But I, I I do love TV, but I love getting outdoors more, of course, yeah. and, and doing things outside. Um, I'd have to say, like, um, one of my favorite documentaries of all time was uh, Dogtown Z-Boys. Oh, wow, yeah. Dogtown, it that was, was a skateboarding. Yeah, it was the evolution of wheels and boards. Oh, and that's awesome. How these, the Zephyr surf team evolved into the Zephyr skate team and, and the, the the key young kids that took this sport to a whole new level without even knowing it, mm. you know, no clue what an impact they were have on uh, skateboarding. Um, but yeah, it's wow, it's one of my favorites. Love that. Yeah, we'll put a. This is the I love asking these the, the random questions too because it always gets me like I'm gonna I wanna put a link in the, in the show notes to that and it'll remind me that I'm gonna have to watch that again because I think I think I have seen it. It's been a while, um, so we're gonna we're gonna get some good links on the on the blog. We'll have this. We'll get the uh, the podcast with uh, the Henry Winkler as well. So. Uh, I gotta send Henry Winkler a fly trap and a magnifly. Yeah, you should. You should. He is actually. You know what the cool thing about that interview is is I didn't obviously know the guy. But he is a very, uh, it was a lot of fun. He's a very, um, you know, humorous, you know what I mean? And just a really yeah. cool guy, you know? I mean, obviously he was the Fonz. But he's also, I mean, like Barry, have you have you heard of that show? It's like a newer, he just won an Emmy for this show called Barry on HBO. No. Yeah. I that, that was one of the interesting things he said in the thing. He was like, I asked him, this is the question. I kind of called him out a little bit. I was like, Henry, so why not... You know, you love fly fishing. Why not? You know, I'm sure you have plenty of money. Why not just quit and just fly fish? And he's like, man, I'm he's like, I'm 76 years old. I just won an Emmy for Barry. I'm on top of my game. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, I'm like, why would I quit now? I'm I'm living my dream. And and it got me thinking today as the Muhammad Ali, right? A similar thing. I mean, that guy, well, different because Muhammad Ali was this great bigger than life person who actually probably should have quit boxing, you know, many years before he quit. Um, 
but that guy was amazing, and so is Henry Winkler. You know what I mean? So, and, and so are you, Phil. This is like that's what the power of this podcast is that it's the conversations, which in stories, and uh, and so yeah, man, this has been a lot of fun. Anything else before we we roll out of here? You want to give a heads up on? Um, yeah, just uh, hit our link tree, and and everything we have is under twenty bucks. Uh, it's super affordable, great for gifts, and uh, great for that angler that has everything and potentially not the fly trap or magnify yet so there you uh, go check them out yeah, all our products are guaranteed perfect all right we'll send everybody out and remind us again on that uh, the website yeah so the website is artistsandanglerllc.com and the link tree is link l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash artist and angler slash artist and, yeah artist and, perfect all right, great, Phil. Well, this has been awesome. I'm glad we finally were able to put this together after many years and many shows of, of seeing you and, uh, you know, and, and giving you, you know, like just talking about this. So I'm glad we were able to do this. And uh, yeah, until we uh, talk at probably at the next show, man, uh, looking forward to keeping in touch with you. Yeah, thanks so much, Dave. I appreciate it. And as always, it was great seeing you at IFTD. And, uh, you know, let's uh, make sure we grab a few beers the next time. Yeah, let's do that. All right, see ya. <laughs> thanks, Dave. So there you go wetflyswing.com slash 344 check out the links show notes and everything else we have going on before we get out of here just want to note that top fly challenge wetflyswing.com slash top fly you can win a box of flies right now by clicking over there and, uh, and entering your email right now and I'd love to hear your story bonus points if you send me an email or a message on a DM share your top fly story and I will give you I will give you a shout out on this episode and I would love love to share that story if you get a chance hope you're having a good uh, morning good afternoon or good evening and i am looking forward to hopefully seeing you on a trip on the water or maybe online thanks for listening to the wet fly swing fly fishing show for notes and links from this episode visit wetflyswing.com